Welcome, my dear students and others, to my continuing coverage of Chapter 10's Lessons on Gases. To begin this one, I want to share you a different link that's shown right here and is also posted in the description beneath this video to a separate video that I made some number of years ago and is hopefully kind of entertaining, showing the detonation of some cool explosive gases. I strongly invite you to watch it for the sake of entertainment. With that said, let's move into today's lecture, which touches on the density and molar mass of gases. So to calculate gases, individual densities and molar masses, sometimes abbreviated as MWs in a gas system, we can use the following equation, which is derived from the ideal gas law. Now, if you want to see how it's derived, you can leap to page 396 of our textbook, which is referenced in the description below. Now in this equation, D is the gas's density, which is mass divided by volume. N is the number of moles in your gas. MW is the gas's molecular weight in units of grams per mole. V is its volume. P is its pressure. And R is the ideal gas constant, which I discussed in an earlier video. And T, of course, is the gas's temperature. This segues beautifully into an example problem. I want you to calculate the density of NO2 gas at this pressure and temperature, and separately the molar mass of a gas if 2.5 grams of it occupies this volume at this pressure and temperature. Now I'm not going to solve this for you here, but I do have a link in the description to a separate video that you're welcome to click on, in which I do. And of course it involves the equation that I just shared with you. This takes us then to Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. So while studying gases in the 1800s, British scientist John Dalton observed that the total pressure of a mixture of gases equals the sum of the pressures that each gas would exert if it were present alone. In other words, if you have a bunch of different gases, let's say gas one, gas two, gas three, and so forth, that each exerts a specific amount of pressure and you put all of them in the same container, the total pressure of all of the gases combined is just equal to all of those individual pressures added up. Isn't that neat? This is known then as Dalton's law of partial pressures. Now this simple equation right here implies that each gas behaves independently of all of the other gases, even if they're held inside the same container or system. Thus, we can calculate each gas's individual pressure by using the ideal gas law equation like this. We rearrange the ideal gas law PV equals NRT for each individual gas to solve for P. Thus, gas 1's individual pressure, P1, would be equal to that gas's number of moles, N1, multiplied by RT divided by V. Separately, the pressure of gas number 2, which we'll call P2, would be equal to that gas number 2's number of moles, N2, multiplied by RT divided by V, and so forth for gas 3, 4, 5, and however many gases you have in the system. Once we have all of the individual pressures for each gas, we can then add them up together to get the overall total pressure for the entire system, which segues into a gorgeous video problem. A mixture of that many moles helium, this many moles neon, and this many moles argon is confined to a 10 liter vessel at this temperature. I want you to calculate the partial pressure of each of these gases in the mixture, then calculate the total pressure of the mixture. Now, as per usual, I'm not going to solve this here, but I will post a link in the description below to a separate video in which I will which takes us to another beautiful problem. A sample of five milliliters of diethyl ether formula and density shown right here is introduced into a six liter vessel that already contains a mixture of N2 and O2 gases whose partial pressures are these numbers right here. The temperature is held constant at 35 C and the diethyl ether totally evaporates, which means it converts completely to a gas. With that background, can you calculate the partial pressure of diethyl ether? Then calculate the total pressure in the container of all three gases. Again, I'm not gonna solve this for you, but invite you to click a link in the description below that takes you to a separate video in which I do. Until next time, my beautiful students and others, thanks for watching this video and please have an enjoyable rest of your day. Oh, my God.